This is going to be a follow on to my net present value internal rate of return and return on investment video where we talked about several methods of valuing a capital budgeting project. Now what we left out of that video was how to calculate the break even which often enough people are also interested in. So if I scroll down through the model here are the values we calculated in the first video and then I set up some helper cells here where I netted the cash flows. All right, so this is the cash inflow minus the cash outflow. And below that, I set up where we're going to calculate our break even, and we discount the cash flows back to the present value. All right, so when you're looking for break even, what we're looking for is this total cash flow where it goes positive. All right, so by just looking at this, we can estimate what the break even is. All right, it was, you know, there's year one, year two, and it happens in year three. So it's all of year one and year two plus some portion of year three. That portion turns out to be this remaining negative amount divided by the present value of this cash inflow in year three. All right, so from this, we can estimate that it happens in year two plus some fraction of year three. So it'll be two point something. All right, if we need an exact number, we're going to have to start running some calculations down here. All right, so what we want to have happen is we want in year three, the negative amount in F, uh, excuse me, E40 divided by the cash flow from uh, year three. All right, so it's 0.85. That's what we're looking for. If I copy this across, though, I'm going to get a number for each one of those instances. All right, so I only want it to show up here where it's the first time it went positive, and I don't want it to show up before or after that. So we're going to write a function to do that, and we're going to use if. And there's two conditions I need to meet. I need the negative value in the previous year to be greater than zero. All right, so if break even were to occur in year one, that would mean when I turn this value negative, uh, it's greater than zero. All right, in this case, it, that will happen. All right, so that's why there's two conditions. The second condition is that my total outflows, when I compare inflows to outflows, is also greater than zero. All right, so I can't possibly have broken even before my cumulative cash inflows exceed my cumulative cash outflows. So our second condition is going to be that D15 is greater than D25. Okay, if both of those things are true, then we're free to calculate the fraction of a year, and it will be the cash flow or the total cash flow from the previous year over the cash inflow from the current year. All right? And then when Okay, so based on all that, then there should be no value here, and there isn't. And we can just start copying this across to see if it actually works the way we think it does. So still nothing. All right, and then we need it to print in the F column an output, and it does. And then we don't want an output in, in either G or H. And so it works. All right, so that's the fraction of the year when we go positive. All right, so then the break even is actually in the year from this column plus this. All right, and then up at the top, I have cells that represent each one of those years, so I can just use those in my formula. Okay, and so what we're going to do here is try to add what's in C7 to what's in D41. Okay, so if it did occur in the uh, first year, uh, we would have a value here. Uh, obviously, it doesn't occur in the first year. It doesn't occur out here. And this, this result actually helps us a little bit because I don't have to now worry about trying to write this formula that only shows up in certain cells like I did up here. All right, since when there is nothing here, it results in an error message. All I have to do is suppress that error message, and I should get the correct result. So what I'm going to do is wrap this in if error. Right. If error works a little bit funny, it will try to do this calculation. And if that results in an error, then it will do whatever I tell it to do after the comma. In this case, I'm just going to tell it to put an empty string. Okay, So that suppresses the error message. And then if I copy across, we'll see if we get the actual correct break even. And we do. Okay, Just a couple more things. Uh, if we want to hide this sort of helper result up here, we can do that by just changing the output color to white. All right. And if we want our output to match the other outputs we calculated, so this sort of purpley background with bold 
uh, font. I'm going to select these cells and I'm going to use conditional formatting to do that. So I'm going to go to conditional formatting. I'm going to select a new rule and then from the style I'm going to select classic. Okay, so here's our default and uh, I'm going to change it to cells that contain. All right, and cells that contain no blank. All right, so right now it's going to be this light red background and dark red font. I'm going to change that. We'll make a custom format. And uh, first of all, we'll change the background color. And I'm going to select more colors and this little eyedropper here and hover over the color I want. So it's purple. Then I want the font to be bold and the border to be an outline. And then just one more thing, I have to change the color of the font. Okay, so we've matched as close as we can the format of these outputs. Okay, and then we can just test it out to see uh, how well it works. So what would happen if uh, it only cost us 300,000? We see that moves it over, changes the conditional formatting, and our new break even 1.91 years. And then once again, if we go up, Conditional formatting moves, uh, and the calculation also moves. Okay, so I hope that helps with uh, getting a break even in Excel.